Hey guys, welcome back. So I hope you enjoyed my past videos um, on finding your profitable business ideas and then also validating them so that you can see if they're actually good ideas or not. Um, now, a lot of you guys have emailed me over the past few days saying that you love the videos. You've also sent me some ideas, um, some business ideas of yours for me to critique. So that's what we're going to go over today. Now, if you haven't watched my videos on finding profitable business ideas and validating them yet, I would highly recommend you watch them before you watch this one, just so you can understand some of the frameworks I'm going to be referencing in there. Um, but in this video, what I'm really going to focus on is we're going to look at eight different business ideas and I'm going to tell you my perspective on what's good about them, what's lacking. I'm also going to talk about some of the mindset stuff related here that I noticed and how I would think about that because I know that that is a big part of, you know, building an online business or starting to build one. And then um, the main reason why you should watch this video is so you can start mastering the aspect of you know business idea validation and finding a business idea because in the future you're going to have to come up with ideas for your blog posts um, or youtube videos you're going to have to come up with ideas for your online coaching programs um, courses um, software products anything that you do it's going to boil down to very similar frameworks to these ones that i'm sharing here with you right now and the way that you kind of learn, you know, how to understand things, like, for example, the way that you get better at maths is you go for a lot of practice problems. Same thing here. You can go over different business ideas and challenge yourself to think about what's good about them, what's not good about them, how would you do them differently, are they good ideas or not. Even if they are not yours, you can start training your thinking and then compare your thinking to my thinking as well. And that way, you can really learn a lot more about you know finding an idea that's good for your business as well. And that's really the main focus of today's videos. So we're going to go over eight different ideas and I'm going to walk you through how I would analyze them. But one thing, if you really want to get the most out of this is I challenge you that after I go through this um, or after I bring a new idea on the screen, which is basically the emails that my audience sent me, maybe pause the video, spend a few minutes reading this and then think about, is this a good idea or not? What is it missing? And so on and so on. And when we do that a couple of times, I feel like by the end of this video, you'll have a much better understanding of, you know, why some of these ideas work, what they're missing and so on and so on. So that again, you can come up with better ideas yourself as well. Okay, so let's dive in without any further ado. This very first idea um, is coming from Fayaz. I'm probably butchering your name, I apologize. Um, but the basic idea is teaching guitar to Pakistani audience. So let's go for this email and I'm gonna break things down that I think are very interesting that I wanna to touch on. So as I already spoke to you many days ago, my idea of teaching guitar to a Pakistani audience, so that is the actual idea in their own language that is Urdu. The songs taught will also be mostly the ones popular in local market. Okay, so first of all, I already like this idea just based on the, um, just based on this, because right now what his, what Fias is doing, he's taking on, you know, he's taking a concept and he is trying to exploit or um, basically serve an audience gap, which is what we talked about in one of the earlier videos. In the first video on finding a profitable business idea, where we basically say that in order to build a profitable business today, you do need to either serve a specific audience that nobody else is solving yet, you need to solve a specific problem that nobody else is solving yet, or you need to find a different angle or a unique solution or a different way to solve the problem. So this really comes down to finding a specific audience because right now, if you go and try to teach guitar online, it's probably not gonna go that well because so many people are already doing it unless you're really, really good at it or unless you're really famous or unless you focus on a specific type of guitar, let's say the electric guitar, there's probably a lot less competition there. So there might be a bigger gap there. Um, in any case, here it does seem like he is targeting a specific audience. And as we'll see later on as we analyze this email, there is a nice gap in the market. Um, but this is a really, really good sign. So based on just that, like, you know, if he wants to teach um, guitar to Pakistani audience, there's nobody really doing it in Pakistan. That by definition, it's a great business idea because people probably do want to learn how to play guitar. And if nobody's offering a paid service to them or online resources, then you can be the person that comes in there and it's as good as it can get, um, you know, when it comes to business ideas. Take into account that like the audience is kind of like willing and able to pay. But then again, if you do live in Pakistan, even if people, let's say, earn less money there, 
then, you know, they might spend a little bit less on your courses than in the US market. That's fine because you also don't need to earn as much to make a decent living. Um, so it kind of like balances itself out. Okay, so let's keep going over this. So the great thing is nobody's teaching guitar to Pakistanis. So that's really important when it comes to finding your business idea that there is a gap in the market. So I think that's really, really good. And I would say this is a great idea. More like an audience gap, as you said, but at the same time, there are multiple challenges or question marks. So this is natural. You find a good idea, then you might have questions. But what about this? But what about that? But what about that? So let me go and address some of this. So in, in Pakistan, e-commerce is limited to physical project ge products generally. There is no concept of fame for knowledge online at the moment, but yes, I've heard people on local guitar forums talk about if there's a paid course. So that's great. If you've already heard local people, um, people on local guitar forums talk about if there's a paid course, that means like that's a moment of traction. Like we talked about that in the business idea validation video that's a potential moment of traction. Like that's showing that there is demand for your idea. So that's, you know, another great sign here. Um, and then he says, I have similar plans of starting a fitness weight loss plans. So I guess you're also an expert at that. Okay, that's cool. Um, so guitar and fitness are both topics I'm passionate about, but working guitar... Um, okay, he wants to choose the guitar to begin with. I have always thought there should be somebody teaching guitar. So that's another thing that we... Um, mentioned in the last video, if you always feel like, you know, there should be somebody doing this, that's a really, really, really good sign that you can go ahead and do it and make it happen. And I always wanted the local start guitarists, a handful should have their own course. So while the first course will be a basic one with someone on a big star, but later on, I plan to get the well-known Pakistani guitarists on board. So it seems like you want to do this by partnering together with someone. I think that's totally fine. Um, one thing I do want to highlight here is this concern of there is no concept of paying for knowledge online at the moment. Okay, so this to some people it might feel like, oh my God, like, you know, there's no payment providers, there's no this, there's no that, there's no concept, people aren't doing this already. And that might prevent them from actually pursuing this idea. What I'm thinking is like, no, actually that makes it a great idea, an even better idea because you can be the person that leads it. Because imagine, let's say 10 years from now, is the situation gonna be the same? Probably not. There probably are going to be some people already offering services online. So why wouldn't you be the first person to do it? Why would somebody else have to lead the way? Is it gonna be more challenging in some ways? Yes, maybe you're gonna to have to find good payment providers. Maybe some people will not get used to it immediately and it might take you some time to generate some traction. But on the other hand, if people are already asking for courses, you will figure thing, these things out. Even if you have to take bank transfers initially, which I'm sure that people can do instead of PayPal links. Like you can figure these things out and if nobody's doing it, that's great because you can be the first person to do it and then become the market leader very, very easily. Um, so I think it's honestly a great, great, great idea. Like this makes the idea even better if nobody else is doing it online. It doesn't make it worse. It makes it better because that really means that it's the barrier of entry is high. That means it's less likely that you're going to have competitors. It just makes the idea better. Might it take some time for you to train people like to pay for things online? Yes, but it's going to happen eventually. And if you're not going to do it, then somebody else will. And especially nowadays when people, you know, have more time than ever to look on things on the internet, I think it's great timing to start exploring some of these things. Okay, so then the second concern is most people usually don't want to spend big money anyways. So I'm guessing I can't price it more than 50 USD. Such low price increases the pressure on getting a new number of subscribers. So this is something I would not think about at all when you're starting an online business. And you'll see this happen in a couple of examples, but if the first thing you're thinking about is how much am I going to price the course, you're asking the wrong question because it doesn't matter how much you charge because you're not doing this just for the money. I'll tell you, look, if there's a million Pakistanis who, want, who are interested in learning guitar, you can make a decent living off of that. You can find a way because you could do, you could make an ebook and you could sell that for cheaper. You could make a, you know, recorded course. You could um, you know, coach people on this or tutor them. You could do live workshops, in-person workshops. There's many different things that you can do. Some of them are going to be more premium. You're going to charge more for them. Some are going to be, you know, less premium. But right now, when you haven't started working on the idea, it doesn't really make sense to think about pricing because then you're just going to worry too much about pricing and not on the thing that matters most. And the thing that matters most is building a business that really helps people, that creates value, that creates something that should be there. 
Create the business for the reason that somebody should be doing this, but they're not. Don't do it for the money. Because then if you do it that way, you're going to serve your audience way better and then the money will come as well. So honestly, I would not think about pricing until probably months from now, if not a year from now. Like, Build free content first. Help people. Build a course. And yes, you can talk to the people and ask them like, hey, would you pay $50 for this course? And if they say yes, great, then start selling and that. And then look at your conversion rates and then see if you can improve the course and make it better and then see and test if people are willing to pay more. The problem that I have is questions like this is they're very, you know, their assumptions, their fears, they're not based on real data and I cannot answer them for you. Nobody can answer them for you until you go out and test things. And then even then there are ways to sell something at a more premium rate and so on and so on. There's decisions that you have to make, but at this stage, when you haven't really even done anything with the idea yet, don't spend time thinking about the financial aspects of it. If there's a big gap in the market, and if people in general all over the world are willing to pay for guitar lessons, you can make a decent living out of this as well. So this, I would honestly not focus on at all. Like this is, don't focus on things like this. And if people usually don't want to spend big money, maybe most of them, but there are some people that do. You could say the same thing for Slovenia. You could say people don't want to spend a lot of money because the average salary is like a thousand euros a month after the taxes. But then again, some people sell, you know, consulting for businesses for 10,000 euros. So some people have the money. So as even though like that might be natural and some people teach business in a way that like, yeah, first you should do a business plan and see how much potential is there. I just, I never saw that to be, I never found that to be helpful. This would be helpful in a market that's like really, really, really small. But even then, what, does it make sense to make models and assumptions that might be true or might not be true? Isn't it better to just go out and test the ideas and put the ideas out there and then iterate for them and make them work for you? I like the sec second approach way more because it's way more practical. And then oftentimes you cannot predict the growth. Like, for example, one of my clients, he, when we started working together about, I think it was two years ago, he did like a $1,500 launch. And then two months ago, he did a $235,000 launch. And it went gradually, you know, it went from like, you know, 1,500 launches to 10,000 launches to 70,000 launches to now $235,000 launches. We didn't map that up. We didn't model it out. We didn't predict it. All we saw is like, okay, there's a big gap in the market here. You can be the person that helps people the most. Let's make the best possible free content. Let's make the best possible programs. Let's make them amazing for people. And then he did the right things. And then eventually the results came. And that was unpredictable. Another example from another one of my clients um, who is actually selling guitar courses. Like, you know, he um, started up and he also, when we started working together, he had like a, you know, $1,500 launch. And then again, we went to like $10,000 launches fairly quickly over the course of a couple of um, weeks because he already had a rapidly growing email list and he just did a $50,000 launch at the beginning of this year, which is three times higher than his last launch to date. We didn't model that out. We didn't predict it. We didn't, didn't even spend time worrying about that. Instead, we just focused on like, how can we build the best possible product? How can we sell it? How can we write the best possible copy to sell it? Who are the best clients for this product? How can we help the people the most? Ask yourself questions like this, especially at this stage of your online business, but then also throughout the career. Because doing this, it's not going to help you. It's just going to add more pressure to you. It's going to make you second guess things. And that's not what you want. You want to test things. You don't want to be in your head. You want to be in the field. You want to be testing things. You want to be collecting data. You want to be seeing if there's traction. I would focus on that a lot more. And that goes the same for anyone that asks about, is there enough potential? Da, 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 da. You can test things very quickly. Rather test them than, you know, beat your head up against the wall. Because typically what happens is, you know, you will still like have the same idea that you had like, you know, a month ago and you will have asked yourself this question, but never do anything about it. Your time would be much better spent just testing things. And then if you do a good thing, the revenue will come if there is a gap in the market. Then how to, the final question is how to position target and market to a market of a specific area. Um, I would say this is way too advanced for you right now because um, positioning in the market would mean that you have to pursue a very, very specific market. But if there's nobody already doing this, if there's nobody, you know, teaching guitar in Pakistan, if there's a gap in the market, that is your positioning. You don't need to really position yourself heavily in a market 
where there's no competitors because positioning really means finding your position in the market that is free, that is up for the taking. And this is your position in the market. So you don't need to go ultra specific right now. You might do it later, but again, when you have more data, when you see who the best clients are and so forth and so on, positioning would be really, really important in places like, um, for example, in places like fitness industry where there's a lot of people doing it. But again, if you serve a Pakistani market, that's not important because you're already the only person doing it. So that is your position in the market and that's where you can start. And then you can just solve the problems that people have. And it's that simple. And you don't need to overcomplicate your life with advanced business concepts. Like, yes, you have to do it when there's like, you know, a hundred people teaching guitar, you have to find your own position, your own specific audience and think about how to be different. But if you're entering a market like this, that's relatively underdeveloped, that is your position. You know, you don't need to go deeper than that. So don't need to spend time thinking about that. What else apart from Facebook targeting for that specific current? Again, you don't need to overcomplicate things. You don't need to even worry about that right now. Like that's way too complex. You can use much easier ways to set up an online business. Like you don't even have to touch Facebook ads to get things up and running, regardless of what all the marketing gurus might tell you, especially if you're in a market like this, if you just go and start creating free content for people in your own language, you start putting it on YouTube, you start putting it on your blog and you see if that catches traction. And then when people you know, start talking to you, put them on an email list, you then, you know, create a product for them, you sell it to them. You don't need, you can do a lot of these things organically without spending a, you know, dollar on ads. You can do it with ads as well. But at this stage, like when you have, haven't really validated the idea beyond, like, it seems like you came up with the idea, but you haven't validated it yet. You don't really need to spend time on that. Like just go and use the exercises from validating your idea to actually validate the idea to build up traction. And then you already have potential customers you know, that might already be interested in buying from you. So you can just sell to them directly. And again, it, like, it just removes the need completely for this step. Um, so there are around 1.5 million people on in Pakistan um, who like guitar according to Facebook. So the only f- analysis that I would do here is there's plenty of people. Let's go and build stuff. Let's put it out there. Let's not spend time thinking about it. Let's go build stuff. Because if you're not going to do it, somebody else will. Um, shortlisting it down to major cities. Does it sound like a good market? Um, just because somebody likes guitar doesn't mean they actually want to play. Should I assume like 2% of them might actually, um, act, be, act on purchasing a course tailored to them so I can get a rough idea of the future of the business, assuming I do everything right. I wouldn't worry about this at all. I know some people say that you should. My personal experience, my data, anyone that I've seen starting an online business that has been successful, maybe... 5% 5% of people worry about things like this. And those are the people with like large statistic backgrounds who know how to do this and kind of analysis already or estimations, and they just go and do it. I will say this kind of thinking is unnecessary for this stage of your business. Again, you would be much better off than making this like hypothetical cases, hypothetical scenarios, which again, you don't have enough information. You don't have enough data to make a solid estimation. You would just be guessing all the time. Rather than guessing, go test things, collect the data. That would be my approach to this. Really, I feel like you have a great idea. The next step is to validate it, to put things out there. Stop thinking about all the like different aspects and all these concerns um, and just go out and build stuff. That's what I would do. Because again, like you can spend like another six months do running the math or you can spend six months creating the best possible content that you create and building a course and helping people. And the second route is going to help you get a lot further. So that's my honest opinion. I know it's a bit harsh, but that's, I always like to give you my honest opinion of what I would do in your shoes. Because the last thing I want you to do is spend months and months, you know, doing things that are really just not your, worth your time at this moment. Okay, let's go to the second example, which is a bit shorter. So that's Kevin. Um, so he has a business idea to become a freelance copywriter. And he's asking me, like, is it better to go on a specific niche as a starting point or go a bit broad? I'm mainly aiming for online business owners that sell digital products or services as my target client. Is it a bit broad or should I be more specific? So, okay, so the idea is freelance copywriter, online business owners that sell digital products or services. Okay, so here's the thing. How you, you know, start thinking about this is when you come up with an idea, Um, So freelance copywriting, a lot of people are doing that. So there's no gap in the market with you becoming a freelance copywriter. 
it might also be a thing that there is a lot of demand for always but if you're trying to find like the best possible way you know to find a business idea i do think it's possible to succeed by just start doing some copywriting for people and then kind of like figure out a niche along the way i think that is possible it's definitely way better than just being stuck in your head but if i'm thinking about the optimal way to do this then um what i would want to do is again find a problem gap or an audience gap now what does this mean to something like freelance copywriting so audience gap might be something like you know, for example, if you look at online business owners that sell digital products or services, I feel like a lot of copywriters are already serving that audience. And if you do a little bit of like searching online, like you'll you'll see that that's like there's a lot of people doing this already. I don't feel like there's a big gap in the market that that would be like, you know, a gap in the market that you can really feel and it would really take off like crazy. I don't think that there's a gap in the market there. Um, and Again, just in case you're not familiar with this concept, go watch my previous video. But the gap in the market means that um, there is a gap between the content that's available and the demand of the market. So that means that there's more demand. People want something that doesn't really exist. And then content, this could also be a service in this case, right? So that means like people want a lot of the certain type of copywriters, but they just can't find good ones or they can't find any. Like that's ideally what you would be shooting for if you want to have the best possible success with your idea. And then going for this audience, like online business owners, um, you would look at it like this, right? These are, let's say, like all the people. And then some of the part of the people, let's say, sell their products online. And maybe this portion is a little bit smaller. Um, but then again, a lot of people already are covering this market. So how can, what can you do to stand out? Ideally, you would find a specific part of this, you know, a specific part of this market that nobody is really addressing. So people are addressing all of these things or they're addressing them in general, but nobody's really focusing on this specific part. One amazing example that comes to mind and how you can even start thinking about this a little bit more is go on something like Upwork. Upwork is a you know website where you can find freelancers. Try to look at some of the highest earning freelance copywriters and see what kind of things they help people with. And I'll just give you one example that I found when I did this kind of research. Like I saw a guy that was doing Amazon listings. So his positioning was simple. It was like, hey, if you want me to either write up um, Amazon listing for your product, or improve an existing listing, I can help. That's it in a nutshell. That's the only thing he was focusing on. And he was charging something like $125 per hour to $150 per hour, which is pretty damn solid for a freelance copywriter. Like that's, most people start like, you know, $40 per hour, something like that, $50 per hour. Like that's a pretty solid rate. Um, and he's got a lot of clients actually booking for that. And then, you know, he specialized in that specific area. So he, focused on a specific problem like you know on amazon listing he's not saying like i'll write about pages i'll write websites he's just like hey i'll help you with amazon listings and there seemed to be a gap in the market there and he filled it and if i were a freelance copywriter that's how i would go i try to find a specific problem so the way that you can again also think about that is you think about let's say online business owners so copy writing for online business owners, what else do they need copy written for? So it's sales pages, then it's sales funnels, then it's um, blog posts, um, eBooks, or maybe even guides. Then there's Facebook ads. Then there's website copy. We have website copy. Um, and then maybe there's like engagement emails to your email list as well. And so on and so on and so on. What I would recommend is if you go for that audience, just because there are so many people competing with this, I would just pick one thing, get really, really good at it. Might be blog posts, might be guides. Let's say you pick guides 
So Ultimate Guides, I've seen a lot of demand for that. Nobody almost know, knows how to write Ultimate Guides. And um, a few of my clients that have trained how to write Ultimate Guides that wrote them for other people, they were able to charge between, um, let's say, two and a half thousand to five thousand dollars per guide. And it's about 50 hours of work. So it's about 50 to 100 dollars per hour. And then if you get learn how to, you know, do it a little bit better, do it a little bit faster, then it can actually be, um, you know, you can do it during a shorter time frame as well and increase your hourly rate further. So that would be interesting because I don't know any um, you know, freelance copywriters that just focus on writing ebooks or guides. And that's how you could really stand out. And then anybody who wants to have an amazing lead magnet or a guide written on the topic of their expertise, you can be like, hey, I'll go in there and I'll do it for you. And I've noticed like so many people have asked me, like, do you know any copywriters that do this and that and that? And I wish I had somebody to send to them. And, you know, I did want some of my clients, but then I've seen a lot of this demand. Um, you know, people want somebody to do this for them. So that would be, for example, an example of a gap in the market. Now, what I'm saying is, you know, try to break down either the copy, um, sorry, like the problem further and try to, you know, see if there's a lack of copywriters on one of these topics. Like, what do you notice if some people are looking for something, if they're complaining about it, you know, do your market research, like talk to people about this and then try to find, um, you know, try to find something that you can really be like, you know, something that people want that nobody or not many people are doing yet. And then the other thing is, so we're focused on the problem. Now we could also focus on the audience. And this is, you know, we would focus on focusing on like, on like the specific part of this audience of, um, let's say online business owners. And that might mean, you know, how you would break that down. Well, just think about it. Which industries are the people in? So let's say that, you know, they're in like the fitness industry is one. So there's a lot of actually copywriters just just focus on the fitness industry. But what are some other industries? Maybe there's like coaches. So you could be like, you know, there's a lot of these like live coaches and people like that. And you could be a freelance copywriter for coaches or people who sell really high ticket programs. Um, or, you know, maybe you could be a freelance copywriter for people who teach guitar. I'm just making this up, but like you can break it down into specific topics as well. Um, then you can break it down into specific different kinds of topics. Like for example, people who, you know, who want to sell masterminds, copywriting for live events, specifically for online courses. So you could specialize in some of those areas. And yes, the answer is yes, you should specialize further right now because there's so many people trying to serve anyone and everyone. Um, or like, you know, it might be the, let's say, financial market. There's multiple ways in which you can break down this market. And then there's also something that we didn't cover at all. And there's like another way to slice this market. And, you know, if you visualize it, you might visualize it this way, right? And what's that? Well, maybe you're in Indonesia. And I don't know what kind of language they speak there. So I guess let's, let's make an assumption that they speak like, or in Croatia or whatever, let's say Croatia. Maybe there's not enough copywriters in Croatia. So again, you can focus on that specific audience, like be right copy in Croatian. And that's how you can stand out. Um, or for example, you could write copy for... Um, something completely different like restaurants. Or you could write copy for something completely different like um, museums. And so on and so on. Like, can you see like, or let's say like car salons. for, you know, online stores like e-commerce stores. There's a million ways to slice and dice. And I'll actually, let me make a note, like make a note, make a point to slice and dice a market until you find something where there is a clear gap where you can see like, hey, a lot of people are asking for this and nobody's really delivering on it. 
let me be the person to, you know, you can always be the person to learn this skill. Then you can test it. And then, you know, if things go well, then go all out on it. So this is how I would think about that. I would definitely break down the audience further. Right now, I would say this is not a great gap in the market because there is so many people doing it. So that's why it's broad. But I wanted to show you how you can make it more specific by slicing and dicing the market in a matter of different ways, like from the types of businesses, you know, that you found here. So we went over different, um, you know, types of businesses here. We went over specific types of copy that you can write. You can talk about like, you know, slice it dice in terms of like the language, like copywriting for Pakistani people. Um, you can focus on the specific business model. You can focus on the specific, you know, industry that people are in. There's so many ways to slice and dice this. And, you know, some of these things you might already have experience in and that's where you start looking. Um, but you really have to have this feeling like, oh, like somebody should really be doing this and nobody's doing this yet. You have to have that feeling that I talked about in my video on online business idea validation. So that's my feedback on that idea. Let's continue by looking at the third one. So this one is from um, Andrea. So she wants to, she's a doctor in Brazil, specialized in ultrasound. I think that's, by the way, super interesting. That would be an interesting niche, like, you know, to speak to just doctors with, and teach them how to like, you know, analyze the ultrasounds better and show them like practice examples and build a course on that. Like that would be just a really cool, thing that I'm not sure, I have no idea if it exists or not, but that would be like probably something that could be really, really helpful to a lot of people and would be just like really specialized. And even then, like, for example, if you um, didn't want to do like this, like, let's say the market is saturated, like there's a lot of people in it, you could just focus on Brazil and I'm pretty sure like that would be a, an interesting thing to do. And you could write about that and you can analyze things and like that would be just really interesting. It might not, you might not be able to do it publicly online, but more like, you know, internally, but that's just really interesting. Um, okay. Okay. So then Andrea's idea is, I recently started doing acro yoga, which was fun and it helped me so much with my help that I thought I could teach that on the internet, helping others to exercise in a fun way and maybe earn some money, um, working from home. It doesn't sound like the best idea ever since you need at least to devoted people to make it work, but that's what I know. So my analysis, um, if you look at just the market of online, you know, acro yoga, there's no gap there. A lot of people are already teaching acro yoga online. You would have to find a specific angle for it. Now, acro yoga for Brazil, that might be interesting. Um, I haven't done the research because like, I can't speak Portuguese. So you could do the research and you could see if nobody is doing that yet. And then that might be a great idea if there is a gap in the market. But again, that's how you can do the research. You can look just online. You can do this kind of a Google test that I talked about with idea validation. And then you can go and start testing it. But so in, in like, I would say this could be a great idea. The main concern that I have here is one, you said you started recently, you know, doing acro yoga and like, I wouldn't go to a restaurant from a chef who just recently started cooking, if you know what I mean. Like a lot of people say you don't have to be an expert to, um, you know, build an online business. I do feel like in order to build the best possible online business, it would have to be something that you're an expert in. Um, then it would have to be something that excites you. And then finally, it would have to be something that there is demand for, right? So it always, you want to have that intersection of all of those three things. And hopefully you guys don't hear the sirens coming off here because it's, yeah, hopefully it's like just a security test. Anyhow, so if the expertise is lacking, the problem is like you might not be teaching things in a way that's healthy or correct or that actually works. Um, problem is you might have, you might feel imposter syndrome and so on and so on. Um, and you really want to make sure when you teach something that you know what you're doing. So that, I don't know you, I don't know your skills. I don't know what recently means. Have you done it for like the past two years? Have you done it for two weeks? I do feel like if you've done it for two weeks, I would just get, get better at it, like get really good at it over the course of a year and then teach it. 
Um, if you've been doing it for years and you're actually really, really good at it, then I would teach it. But then also you probably have a partner that does it with you. So you could just record yourself doing it. Um, I don't think this is that big of an issue. Like, because a lot of couples want to learn acro yoga and you can probably find somebody to do it. Because if like, if you're really excited about this, something, like you will find a way to make this work. So that's really like, I think it sounds like a great idea to do it, especially for a Brazil audience, for like a, you know, bigger audience. I don't think it makes sense, but for a specific audience, it could work. But then I would say you have to be an expert. Otherwise, you're going to run into too many issues down the line. Like just like, you know, you want to be an expert in ultrasound. You also want to be an expert in acro yoga or like, you know, you want to be able to teach it well. So maybe just start teaching your friends and then if all they all really like it and find it really helpful and you feel like you're doing it in a way that actually works and it's healthy and it's safe and you know what you're doing, then try teaching it online, experiment with that and then move on from there. So that would be my analysis for this one. Okay, then the next idea is from um, Vinicius, who has already um, started a service business. It evolved from his freelance work. So, and he's already been doing a lot of work here. Um, I'm actually not going to go into the details on this, but basically what he's doing is he had this business idea um, and he develops plugins for a visual development platform called bubble.io. So probably not familiar with that. You don't need to be. It's basically, you know, he's developing some kind of building blocks or things that like, you know, so some kind of software that helps people. Um, and, you know, for a very specific platform. So he's not just developing WordPress plugins, which would be more um, broad, but it's like a niche specific platform. Okay. And what I like about this idea is he already had it validated because he, it evolved from his freelance work that he was already doing. Like whenever you're already charging for something and you're doing it already, um, that's, you know, either your job or your freelance work or something like that, that's typically a good business idea. You might still have to find a way to sell it online, but usually that's a really, really good idea. And, um, you know, he says that he's already, um, earned $800 less month from, you know, business clients. So I'm assuming that, um, 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 like that's with his actually new website that he has. So that's awesome. And this is the kind of traction you want to see when you, ever you do have a business idea. And then, um, he says that the goal is to earn at least five times that from the business clients until the end of the year. Um, and I have another developer and so on and so on and so on. So I wouldn't really focus on that. I think it's fine to have goals, but again, I would just focus on finding gaps in the market. I would focus on developing the best possible plugins, supporting people, answering their questions. That's where it's better to spend your time and then the revenue comes in and of itself because right now, even like just projecting things or like developing strategies to earn money, I just feel like bottom line, like focusing on results, which is what I call result-oriented thinking. Result-oriented thinking I feel like it causes more problems than it helps you. If you focus on this is how much money I want to make, I want to make these projections, I want to make this much, I want to build a course for a thousand dollars, da 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 da. If I want to grow my email list by this many people, it's difficult because a lot of people teach this because they sell you on the idea you're going to make thousands of dollars and this many email subscribers and this much traffic online. And I've done some of that myself because I know that that sells and I. Like, I know that these are the things that people want, but what I have also noticed is that sometimes just focusing on the numbers, oftentimes actually just focusing on the numbers, like it just doesn't create the best possible business. Like all the best businesses that I know, they don't, maybe there's an element of focusing on the numbers, but that's not their primary focus. Their primary focus is developing the best possible programs, you know, finding gaps in the market, understanding their audience, speaking their language, all of these things that aren't super quantifiable, but at the end of the day, they lead to this rapid growth, like from those two clients that I shared with you earlier, like, you know, whose businesses have exploded. Even I myself have created a six-figure online course on selling ultimate guides, um, oh, sorry, on creating ultimate guides, which is what I referenced earlier. Um, and it, it's a course that generated over $100,000 in a single year of selling it. Um, and it sold between $1,000 and $2,000 when I sold it because it gradually increased the price. 
But when I sat down, I didn't think, oh, I want to create the $2,000 course or I want to make $100,000 with my course. I was just thinking, nobody's really teaching how to create ultimate guides. I feel like they're an amazing tool to grow your online business. Nobody's teaching this well. It seems to be working for me. It seems to be working for others. But again, nobody's teaching it. There seems to be a gap in the market. Let me go out and do it. And then I developed the outline. Then I developed the curriculum. And then I realized, oh, you know, originally I wanted to sell it for $500 because that's how I, how much I sold my last course for. But then I realized to make it the best possible course, it would be worth a lot more than that with like the format of the course that I chose. So that's why I decided to price it at $1,000. And then a lot of people told me like, oh, it's way too cheap. So I increased the price gradually. And then, you know, I didn't make any projections how many people I want to join. But then like at the end of the day, it generated that much revenue. But I didn't think about that. I didn't have strategic revenue goals or things like that. I just focused on making the best possible products and the best possible service and pro- solving the problems of my audience. And that's what then generated that revenue. If I focus just on the money and how much I wanted to make, I would probably build a much different product and it probably wouldn't be nearly as good as it. And it's questionable if it would sell well because the big reason why it did sell so well is because people were raving about it. They were recommending their, it to their friends. They were convincing them to join it, even though there was nothing in it for them. They just loved the program so much. That's why, again, I don't like to focus on these things. I think it's fine to have goals, but I'm not going to critique this for you. I'm not going to tell you if it's possible or not, because one, I would be making a lot of assumptions and estimations. Two, I don't understand your market nearly as well as I should to make those assumptions. And three, because it's just not productive. Because it's better for me to tell you, hey, focus on understanding your audience and building products that they want and solve their problems, which maybe it's not as sexy as talking about the five-figure growth formula, but it is what will get results based on all the data and based on all the hundreds of people I've helped build online businesses. That's what's going to get you results, not just focusing on the revenue and stuff like that. Finally, I do want to highlight this. I don't feel stuck. I have many ideas on how to progress and my specific step is increasing sales by creating a repeatable and scalable sales process. So I have a volume and stability to hire this guy in full time. So I like how calm and strategic this is. It's like, you know, saying like, I don't feel stuck. I have plenty of ideas. I'm just going to work for them step by step. That's a really good mindset to have. And I did want to mention a much better alternative to result-oriented thinking is two options of thinking. So customer oriented thinking that's a great alternative because basically you're not focusing on how much money you want to make but you're focusing on making the biggest possible impact that you can make in the world um like you want to really focus on yeah i'm going to create the best possible product the best possible free content i just want to help people kind of what i'm doing with these videos like i'm not doing these videos for the money I don't have projections. I don't even care how many people watch these videos. I just want to see if people like this, if they keep watching them, if they watch the whole videos, if they find them helpful. I want to see if they're helpful. And I don't care what it turns into. I don't care if there's, I never earn a cent from them. I don't care if it becomes a million dollar business. I really don't care because I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on my customers and how I can serve them as best as possible because I found that to be way better for the customers and for me, because it makes things a lot more fun and exciting. So that kind of thinking I would recommend instead. And then the second type of thinking that I would recommend is mastery oriented thinking. So mastery oriented thinking is another great alternative because you do really, you should really focus on your customers, but you should also focus on mastering these skills. And if you're, you know, half an hour into watching this video, that's what you already have. Like you're not, you don't want the 10 minute video that teaches you this hacker formula. You're willing to go for this and learn and, you know, just get all the knowledge that you can get. And that's the best type of thing that you can have because it really helps you understand fundamentals of the business. Well, it helps you master the concepts. It can help you like build a strong foundation and then the critical skills on top of that foundation. And in the long run, you will go, you will build a much better business this way than the people who just want quick tricks and hacks and just to make money. So for example, if we go back to one of these examples, um, you know, here, instead of saying like, you know, I'm guessing I can price the course at, you know, $50 max, which is just, you know, assumptions, assumptions, guesses, you know, without data, it's pretty pointless to do that. 
Instead, you think about like, I want to get good at selling things online. I want to get good at writing. I want to get good at developing products. I want to get good at, you know, serving my market. I want to understand. I want to learn as much as possible about my market. Um, I want to test different price points and see which one of these works. Um, and then I want to, you know, see if I can create a, you know, higher, more premium product and just see how that goes. And that's really mastery oriented thinking, like really embracing that growth mindset, that learning mindset and trying to learn as much as possible rather than just focus on the results. This kind of mindset will help you get much, much, much further. And I like, I like this, you know, I like this mind stuff, like, you know, focusing on next steps, increasing scale, you know, increasing sales, creating a repeatable sales process. It's all about learning, learning, learning. I really, you know, like this mindset from um, Vinny, Vinicius or yeah, from Vinicius. I really like his mindset um, in here. So this is the kind of mindset that I would definitely recommend you to adopt. Okay. So we have a couple of more ideas that we'll go over. The next one is from Tibold. So he wants to become a breeding coach. And let's look at a little bit more context. So I'm in the early process of pursuing an idea at the moment, but I'm still unsure. Um, if you're unsure, I'm still unsure, you probably haven't validated it. Watch my previous video on business idea validation. Spend a week doing the exercises from it. And by a week from now, you'll be a lot more sure. Best piece of advice I can give you. Yeah. Um, let's keep going. So, because even like, if you do that, like you might turn, it might turn out that the idea is not as good as you want it to be. And then this advice will actually be really helpful to you, but I would actually just go and test your idea rather than just trying to think about, is it good or not? Like you'll just get a lot more about, you know, a lot more ideas. Like if you get and test it into the wild. So watch that video and go implement it. Anyhow. So idea is to become a breeding coach in France. I'm French as there's a lot of space on this topic in the moment, less so in the English speaking market. So this is great. This means like, you know, he's done some kind of research and analysis already to find that gap in the market. That's really, really cool. And like he says, like, you know, in English speaking market, that's not such a big gap and here there is. So, okay, that's perfect. Um, make sure that there's also demand for it. That's really important that there is demand because otherwise if people don't want to pay for this you know it's not really that helpful to you the rationale behind it um i would focus more on data than rationale that's just one thing like rationale is fine but you want to really get data because demand really comes from data not like what you think is out there but what people are saying and what people are already asking for so that's just a small note but let's see the, the, the breeding impacts so many areas of your life, such as well-being, so stress, sleep, digestion, sports performance, medical issues such as asthma, snoring, sleep apnea, and probably I'll find others if I investigate further. And it's widely known that most people breed poorly these days um, due to hyperactive and stressful lifestyle. Okay. I could potentially serve different audiences, athletes, busy professionals, well-being enthusiasts, medical professionals, as well as patients. Okay, so that's just, let's, before we dive into um, any other things, I will say that, again, this depends. You could go general with your idea and say like, oh, no, there's nobody teaching this um, in France at all. Let me just focus on breeding in general. What I feel like the problem by using that positioning is that people might not want to learn how to breed. Like their problem isn't, you know, their problem isn't breeding. Their problem is stress. Their problem is performance. That's what their problems are like, because people are probably, um, this is an assumption that I'm making. You have to go out and testing. I'm assuming people aren't looking at like, how do I breathe properly to reduce stress? They have, instead they are stressed out and they're like, how do I relieve stress? How do I be, how can I be less stressed out? Um, and then you might come in there and you might help them or performance. Like I know my personal experience in, in weightlifting that I, 
you know, I, I competed in professionally for a long time, there's this element of breathing where you have to really like brace your, your whole muscles in your body. And then that can help you lift quite a bit more weight because especially at like the higher weights when you're near your limit, if you're not breathing properly, you might fail an attempt that you would otherwise succeed in. So breathing becomes very important. So while I generally don't care about breathing and I would not pay for that, when I was preparing for a competition and I knew that breathing was one of my issues and I wanted to get better at it, there were no you know great resources that I could go to. And that's when I would really really like to have something that would help me but I wouldn't pay for it I wouldn't learn about it for the purpose of breeding I would you know pay for it so I can win my competition that's what I would pay because every minor advantage I can get is going to help me so it's a completely different motivation it's like a much bigger reason why I would buy something and this is a little bit more advanced and then you know it's it is a bit more of an advanced topic because sometimes things are a lot clearer like guitar for you know Pakistani market you can just you know teach people who already want guitar but like if people by definition don't want to learn how to breathe or there's not a big audience for that it's kind of like you're saying like hey I can help you with sport performance and if you're interested in breathing for sports I can help you with that you know I can help you with your stress here's how fruit breathing here's how it helps you there's all this research here's like how it helped me here's how it helped all these people here's a practical way to do it um then that's going to be a much better angle. So for this, I would suggest actually just picking one of these audiences first and just doing it like in the business idea validation stage. Like, for example, if I were to target athletes and even athletes is kind of like really, really wide, for example, because which athletes, which athletes need to breathe well? Is it swimmers? they need to breathe differently than weightlifters. Like you would have to really understand the different nuances and the specifics, um, you know, for what purpose. I feel like this could be even further broken down into, you know, further small niches um, or further small audiences. Um, there's a lot of possibilities. And then like if I were to go for weightlifters, I would go into weightlifting communities and I would ask like, hey, you know, do you want to get better at breathing and bracing? Like, is this a thing that you struggle with? Like, if I wrote a great resource on it, would you read it? Like, just go and using the, you know, validation techniques I shared in the previous video on validation, you could go and you could, like, test these markets and just see which one of them is best. You can, like, test, you know, one of these in week one. Week two, you could test this one. Week three, you could test this one. Week four, you could test this one. Um, or you could even, like, test them at the same time and go faster if you wanted to. But then you would know where there's the most demand. You can go and test different audiences and, you know, then basically see like, oh, you know, there's this much response in the first one, this much response in the second one, this much response in the third one, and then this much response in the fourth one. So I'll pick this one because there seems to be the biggest response and the most demand and so on and so on. What I would also say is there's a lot of different audiences here. The ones that I would probably focus on serving is the ones that are relatable to you or the ones that you have expertise in. So it is definitely possible to create a business with an audience that you're, you've never been yourself. Like an example that comes to mind is Jared Tendler. So he's a psychology coach for online poker players. The reason I know him is because I used to teach productivity to poker players. And he never played poker himself. He was actually teaching um, psychology to golfers because that's, you know, he, he played a lot of golf and that's how he learned a lot about it. And then he apparently like he started, you know, and he met some poker players and he realized he could help them with that as well. And nobody was doing it. And then he built a whole business about that. He wrote books about that topic and so on and so on. And um, he... The way that he did it, he's, he learned a lot about the audience and then, you know, he just listened to them and tried to understand them and develop solutions for them and then tested them with them, even though he wasn't playing poker um, himself. So it is possible to do it this way. I think it is a little bit harder to do it this way. It is possible. You have to be really, really good at talking to people and really open to do it a lot, a lot, a lot until you understand them and test all the solutions with them. So I would recommend, you know, choosing a market that you are closer to so something, someone, someone who, for example, you can relate to. So like somebody that um, like maybe you are an athlete, you did a specific sport and breathing help you talk about that. Or maybe like it helped you with some of your issues and so on and so on. So I would definitely um, 
pick an area that's close to you that you have a lot of experience in that you know a lot of people in because for example again if you say like oh you know i want to target athletes but i don't know anyone i don't even know how to do research that's not a great audience to pick it's much better to pick an audience where you do already know a lot of people um so you can just go and talk to them very very quickly very easily so pick one of the audiences that feels like closest to you and then go test it and then test the other ones as well and when when you find traction you can double down on that okay now, moving back into the second part of the email, that being said, I'm not sure whether there's enough revenue potential online with this idea. I think the online courses I could create would fall in this range. People are still don't see breeding as something that would be worth investing a lot of money into, um, especially in fancy where people don't understand on courses, especially online. Um, this is bullshit. <laughs> France, maybe. Europe, like I would say something like 30% of my clients are from Europe and my stuff is... It's difficult for me to, it's like, you cannot work for with me for less than, you know, $500. And most people spend thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars working with me. And a lot of them are from Europe. So I would say this is again, an assumption that, you know, it's better to test it. This is, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I already covered it with previous ideas. I would not worry about this too much. Don't build a business for the money. Don't business to build. A, don't build a business to become a millionaire. You're not gonna do it for the right reasons. You're not gonna build the best possible business. This, even if it's true, you can build a solid living out of it. One of my, you know, best clients, um, actually started selling um, 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 courses in French to a French audience for I think something like fifty dollars or 50 euros and then increased rates further and she's building a very successful multi six figure online business there's you can do a lot of this and you can start small and then you can go bigger but you, you don't even know what's possible at this stage and it's pointless to again think about like revenue potential and things like that because again start putting things online help people for free and then maybe you know what's likely going to happen is you're going to iterate on your idea like the idea that you start off with it's actually not going to be the idea that you finish in. Like, let me just break this down for you. So here's what I did. Um, my first idea, productivity for online poker players. Okay, first idea. Second idea, so that was my first idea. Um, so let, let me actually write down. Productivity, poker players. Okay. I worked on that idea for a while and then I decided I don't want to focus on that market anymore. I wanted to do something bigger, better. So I said productivity plus entrepreneurs. Harder market to get into, but I did have enough connections so I was able to make it work. Because um, basically what I did is during this time I was building connections with other entrepreneurs because I talked about how to grow my business. So then I could also, you know, do productivity for entrepreneurs. And I did that. And then, you know, I realized, okay, I'm doing this good at this. And then I went into online business coaching. Because by that point, I've already been running my online business for quite a few years. And, um, you know, people asked me to help them with their businesses. So I said, okay, I'll do it. So I focused on that idea for a while. And um, I spent, let's say, two years just focusing really hard on that. And then I went into Ultimate Guides, which are like a small aspect of that. And I spent some time really, you know, focusing on serving my clients and developing a good process for that. And then later, you know, I also did things like... Um, writing more, I built, a, I built a program on that, I built a program on copywriting, I built another program on group coaching, for five to six figure online businesses, So there's a lot of different things. And right now I focus mostly on this and I focus on mostly on this and I might do a program on this. Ultimate guides actually fall under copywriting right now. And then um, there's also the 
Um, I might do some one-on-one -on -one sessions, which you can find on my website if you're ever interested. Um, that are just basically a complement to this. And they are also about copywriting as well as um, online business. And then it's my YouTube channel. So these YouTube videos, they are just the free content. And I, I do talk about things like, you know, business ideas. So it basically it is about online business. Um, so I am talking about online business, but I'm not charging for this. Like what I really want is, um, you know, for people to benefit from this knowledge and just share it and use it as much as possible. And then when they're on a level to, you know, like book a one-on-one -on -one session with me or join a group coaching program or work with me, you know, on copywriting or maybe even on writing more, you know, you can work with me on that in the future if you want to, but I'm, I'm not doing this because of that reason. Um, if it happens, it's great, but it's not because I already have plenty of clients for all of these other things that I can make a decent living and, you know, I don't need the extra revenue. Like this is just helping me potentially with this. But what I wanted to demonstrate here is I started out here and then I came here. Like, and I've seen this happen over and over again. Like I see another, another friend of mine. Let me give you another example. Started out, first business idea is... BMW's Europe to US. So his idea was like, let me help people import BMWs from Europe to US. Didn't really work out. Um, just didn't get enough traction because that's something that he was good at. Next, um, it was recurring revenue. plus software engineers. Either software engineers or software companies. So that was his second idea because he had his own software company and he decided to help people with um, basically build recurring revenue streams for their own companies and you know get clients on retainer and so on and so on. So notice how he had a specific audience and a specific problem. So that was great. Um, and this idea actually worked out quite well for him. Um, wasn't the thing that he's doing now, but that actually went quite well. And then in the future, he just decided to act on an idea that feel like, you know, it felt like a random idea to him. Like it was just something that his, his wife was passionate about, um, which was essentially finding cheap flights on the internet so they could travel a lot. Um, so that's finding flights. And they built a software about it and they tested it and instantly they saw a lot of traction with their idea. A lot of people wanted them to do it for them. They, they tested the idea. That's the important part. They went out and tested it. They didn't think about revenue potential and things like that. They just tested it and it really took off. And now it's a much bigger business than his previous business because they have this amazing platform. They have, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of people using their software. It really blew up because they tested it. They saw the traction and then they kept acting on it over and over again. But again, you can see like how much these ideas have changed over time. So what I will say is you don't need to worry so much about where you're at right now. You don't need to do this like you know, estimations for how much money you'll earn, because likely five years from now, you'll be doing something different than you think you'll be doing. Um, you're likely going to go on some sort of this journey where you just discover things and then, you know, you'll run a test and you'll run a test and you'll do this and you'll do that. And then you'll realize something like, oh, I could really do this. And then you'll realize you want to keep doing that and people will like it and you will create things you never imagined. So don't get stuck in things like, working out revenue potential because right now you want to focus on creating something that's really going to help people so that's the customer oriented thinking and two getting good at business skills because then when you get good at something you can apply it to any product any audience anything that you want to sell you can really learn these skills from a mastery perspective and then you can build almost like any type of a business that you want to i would rather focus on those things than on the results um, and then you say, okay, so unless I become more than a breeding coach, um, which I don't know what it would look like. So I'm not a life coach, fitness coach, or a meditation guru. Again, like you could just be the uh, breeding coach for weightlifters. That could be something like that. 
I need a significant amount of traffic to make things like this Mrs. Worthwarth worthwhile online. Again, assumptions. Um, I'm pretty sure that with any of these audiences that you would target, if you find an audience that's willing to pay, you can earn more than people do in regular jobs in France. Um, because like even like, you know, if you just do the math, let's say you sell a course for $100 and then some people will be willing to pay more. Because imagine, imagine that there's this guy who's gonna, who wants to break the world record in weightlifting and he's from US and by day he's a dentist. Um, he wants to hire you to help him with his breathing because that's a weak spot and he wants to break the world record. He would happily pay you $100 per hour to help him do that, if not more. Like, people spend a lot of money on things like this, on weightlifting. Um, and, but even like, again, these are all the possibilities that you might not have even considered. And let's say somebody's preparing for the Olympics. They might be spending a lot of money to, like, you know, make it worth your while, let's say. There's a lot of things that you could do, trust me. There's a lot of potential that maybe you don't see right now, but there is. But if you have an online course for $100 and let's say you get 30 sales of it per month and um, it's not going to be easy, it's not going to be quick, but it's totally doable, um, then it would be $3,000 online. Then let's say you get like one to two, one to two one-on-one clients and they pay you, let's say, um, $400 a month, because let's say they you do four sessions with them for $100 a month, then you're already at, you know, um, $3,800 and so on and so on. There's a lot of things you could do. You could do in-person workshops. You could do this, you could do that. There's many ways to earn a decent living. And like, if you show this to somebody in Slovenia, They'll be like, wow, this is like, you know, the average person earns, let's say, maybe like um, 20, you know, um, $1,200 a month or like a thousand euros. Like this is already a lot of money for many people. For somebody living in New York City, it's not. But like you can make a decent living with any idea and like almost any idea that does fill a gap in the market. The gap in the market does have to be there. If there's no gap then you're not gonna make a decent living. But if there is a gap, there's a lot of things you can do because again, like with breeding, uh, you could become the breeding coach for Paris Saint-Germain football team. They would make it worth your while if you can show them how it can help their athletes perform better and win the Champions League. So again, it's all about how you you know present your ideas. I think there's a lot of potential. It's definitely gonna be worthwhile. But again, focus on customers. Don't focus on result-oriented thinking. Customer-oriented thinking and mastery-oriented thinking are going to be the way to go for you. Um, I'm also open to being active offline, of course, conferences, workshops. I live in a very very small town. I would just, I understand these concerns. I would not focus on this because, look, you're at this stage, right? So this is where you're at. You're at the stage when um, you had the idea, then you go into validation, So you've, you've kind of done this, right? You've kind of done this. And this is where you're at right now. So there's validation. Then you have to do research. Then you have to build an audience. Then you have to, um, let's say, beta test a product. So develop a beta idea for a product. Um, Then you have to sell it. Then you have to um, get feedback on it. Then you have to improve it. Then you have to basically repeat this whole thing over and over again. Um, repeat this whole thing over and over again, repeat this whole thing over and over again, come up with new product ideas. Um, Also have to set up a website at some point. There's a lot of things that you can do. There's a lot more things that I didn't even mention here. But basically, you're focusing on almost like this part, which can be weeks, months in advance, and you don't know 
how this is going to go. You don't know how validation to research is going to go. You don't know how audience building is going to go. You don't know what the research for the product will tell you. You have no idea on these things. So you can guess that, you know, you'll have products which are going to be like online, offline, one-on-one and so on. But again, this would just be assumptions and without talking to people about it doesn't help you. So I would really not focus on that because by the time you have an audience, let's say you have an audience of 5,000 people interested in learning about breeding from, let's say, different industries or under industry, you can ask them how you can best help them. You can develop a product for them that might be something that's completely different that you think would be useful for them. And it might be that you can charge them a lot more money than you think. You don't know this. If you focus on it, is it helping you right now? Is it helping you make any of these decisions in the validation or research stage and easier? No, you could argue, well, I don't want to do this because it's a waste of time, but it's not a waste of time if you're focusing on doing a good thing for your audience and really mastering the online business skills, because maybe, who knows, maybe you will start with this idea and it's going to be your idea number one, number two, and you're going to get a third idea that blows up. Doesn't matter if it works out or not. It matters that you do a good thing in the world and that you learn about this and that you develop this mastery mindset. I know a lot of people are just saying the opposite. They're saying money, 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 blah, blah, blah. No, screw the money. Get good at something. Help people. Focus on that. And focus on decisions you can make right now. Think, focus on ways you can validate your idea. And focus on ways you can do research. Don't think seven months in advance. It's not helping you. If it's not helping you take action today or this week, don't spend time on it. I understand the concerns. I really do because I had that same questions when I was starting out. And I wish somebody told me, stop wasting your time with questions like that and just focus on putting great things out there and learning the skills because you're going like, to do more, you're going to create more and you're going to build a better business in the long run. So that's my advice for this. Um, yeah, I intentionally did not focus on revenue potential in the first video. I'm not going to focus on it because it's such a thing that we can speak about, you know, seven months from now. You just, again, if you already are super good at statistics and estimations and things like that, and you want to go and estimate your revenue potential, that's fine. Take an hour, do that, make it happen, but then go test things and build things because there are things you could just cannot predict, things you cannot estimate. You cannot find the potential on things that haven't been built yet. And that's exactly what you're dealing with in many of these cases. When you fill a gap in the market, you're you're basically trying to explore something new. So there's going to be a lot of unanswered questions and you don't really know what the revenue potential is until you test things in detail. And then you might be able to say, but even then it's not really going to help you in any way. Like it just doesn't help you. Like even if I tell you right now that the revenue potential is to earn hundred thousand dollars a year, which probably is with your idea, does that change anything for you? You can then trust me or not trust me. Or again, it's not helpful. What if I tell you if it's a million? What if I tell you it's 20,000? Does it make a difference? It shouldn't make a difference. Because if you focus on serving your customers and creating something really good and then, you know, focusing on mastery, which if you focus on that, then you will actually be able to create an amazing online business down the line. Then it doesn't matter what the revenue potential is. So that's my answer on that. I know a lot of people think differently. That's fine. I can just tell you what has helped me. And what I've noticed in a lot of my clients, they don't focus so much on results. They focus a lot more on customers and revenue. And that's what really helps people get further ahead. Even in athletes, you see it like the people who are the world's best athletes. Yes, some of them are really obsessed about winning, but some of them are also just excited to get better every day. You know, and that's really the epiphany of like mastery mindset. That's what you want to, you know, embody. So, yeah, I think... There can be a great idea there, especially if there's a gap that you notice here. I would go and test these different markets and then I would take it from there and I would not worry about any of this stuff. Okay, next idea we have from Jamie, um, who is has a couple of different ideas. So I'd like you to consider my ideas, freelance for life. Um, so that's the idea, will guide employees so freelance for life, that's the idea. Employees in full-time employment who'd like to quit their job and freelance full-time, so that's one audience. And also guide those who are already freelancing to help them get more clients. 
increase their rates and work less hours. Um, and then I keep considering whether or not to narrow down this further to just freelance web developers, designers, as this is where my primary skills are. But I'm not sure if narrowing it down further would be a good idea or not. Great question, simple question. If you've listened to this, um, if you've listened to this video so far, um, you probably already know the answer. But first of all, let's actually let's let me take some time to break this down, this idea down. So basically, what you're saying is this. Um, I want to draw this in white. Okay. So these are freelancers. And then let's say, making this up, but this would be um, new. So these are the people who are new to freelancing um, or like, let's say people who wanna quit their jobs and they wanna become freelancers. And then there's a portion of established ones. So you're basically saying right now, your idea is help <laughs> with basically the whole circle. And that's not going to go well because so many people are teaching all of this already. And it's just, there's no gap in the market. Like so many people are teaching freelance. People were teaching freelancing 10 years ago. It's not a good idea. I'll tell you, save yourself the time. Not a great idea. However, if we break this down to this specific audience, which would be in your case, web developers and designers, actually two different audience. So, so I would say um, web developers and designers. So let's say that the web developers are green and then the designers are red. So again, we're like slicing and dicing the hell out of this market. Um, so we have the web developers, you have the designers, and then some of them are going to be new and then some of them are going to be an established ones. This is a great niche. 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 That's my analysis. I would start with one of this, one of these four niches, and then I would test them. I would go into validation. You can validate all of this separately and find which one of this has the most potential. I would say if you want to do both, um, it's absolutely possible to do both. However, don't do it at the same time because if you talk to people and one moment you're talking about like, you know, advanced ways to rate your rates, you raise your rates from like, you know, $117 to $157. And then the other, on the other hand, like you're focusing on like, oh, how do I come up with an idea for, you know, like, or how do I get my first client? You're going to just split focus in too many ways. So what I would recommend doing is instead do it sequentially instead of at the same time. So let's say you focus on new ones first, you create a lot of free content, you create a free course, and then what's going to happen, a lot of people are going to become more established and then you help the established people as well. And then that becomes your product suite. And then maybe, you know, you start adding more audiences. So this is where the other niches would come as well. So then you serve the new ones and then established one. Now, the reason why I split this up is because I feel like I, my, my thinking is web developers and designers are going to be two different audiences who think differently, who are going to have different problems. Like I can imagine a freelance designer has drastically different problems than a freelance web developer with things like, you know, people not being happy with their designs and things like that. I'm assuming that a web developer is not going to have some of those problems. So I do feel like going for one specific audience might be stronger. Um, but this is where validation comes in and you can really go and see where's the biggest gap in the market because maybe a lot of people are already serving designers, but not a lot of people are free, you know, serving um, the web developers or maybe it's the other way around. But I would slice and dice this market down um, and then find, you know, one of this that you feel like, oh, there's actually a big gap in the market and then pursue that one. And then if the other ones are gaps in the market as well, I would just build them over time. So I would, let's say, build this one first and this one second or even this one second. And then, you know, this one would be probably fourth in any case, but this one would be second or third or this one would be second or third. You, you get the idea. But that's basically how I would slice and dice that market. And um, 
yeah, take things from there. So going back to your idea, definitely go more specific, but go on and validate it so you can see where is the biggest gap in the market where you can attach the most traction. And also I like that like this is where your private primary skills are. That means that like your expertise is there. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely a great idea. Much better than going, you know, trying to serve everybody. Um, if you're going to go down this route to teach freelancing, you have to pick an audience that either a problem that nobody focusing on, like, like you know, becoming the go-to expert on raising rates on the internet, or um, you have to find an audience like that is really underserved right now. Like go back to watching the first video on coming up with business ideas. We talk about the gap in the market there. Go watch the second video on validating business ideas, how to do that, how to find different audience, find different gaps, and then how to um, also validate ideas in different ways. It's going to really help you get a lot of clarity around this idea and show you how to test it as well. But that's my analysis based on everything. Okay. The next idea comes from um, Monica. So she has a couple of ideas. So the idea that she's the most passionate about is preventative health. Um, and I spent a lot of time researching this and have been working on this in my free time and talk to my friends and family about it. So, okay, you speak to them about diet, supplements, essential oils, and just taking the health back. So there's a lot of elements in this diet, supplements, essential oils, and just taking the health back into their own health versus relying on a broken health system, especially in this time and age, there's a lot of people in this niche. So that's not good, right? If there's a lot of competition, it means you need to go more specific. Um, so I would research some of these areas separately and see if there's a gap there. Um, also preventative health. I mean, one thing I will say is, I hope you have some kind of like on your doctor or something like that, because if you're speaking about health, you should have some kind of credentials research studies access to something that helps you um you know or you should be a researcher or something like that so that you can actually you know like say the things that are true because i think a lot of the this industry is bs because people are saying like oh this pill prevents cancer and like they really have no data of proving that because they haven't tested it for long enough um so if you're using this like very scientific approach i think it can make sense make sure you are good at it you should really have data you should teach things that actually work and you should have proof that they work but what i wanted to say is preventative health, health is so vague like preventing what what are all the you know problems that you can help people solve like break them down slice them dice them like i don't know what these are like is it cancer is it something else again be careful with those kind of things where um you know, you don't really have the data or like you don't have proof or don't have credentials so you can teach something like that. But um, try to find, like this is where you just have to do a lot of research. If it's not clear to you yet what's something that um, should be out there but isn't, like, like I talked about in, you know, the first and second videos that I recorded here about finding and validating ideas. If you don't have that nailed down yet, then that's what you have to nail first. You have to find that gap in the market that a lot of people are looking for that, but nobody really has, you know, nobody has really done it yet. That's what I would really try to find here because just being passionate about something isn't enough. You have to have that gap there as well. Um, go for different, you know, types of things that you can prevent and then also go for different like things like, you know, maybe essential oils is something that there's not many people talking about it, but try to find that gap in the market if you want to make this a good idea. If there's going to be no gap in the market, it's probably not going to work out that well. Um, so the next idea would be to be self-sufficient in every area. So this is again, super broad. Um, which means you have to break it down to multiple ideas if you want to find a gap in the market because I feel like self-sufficiency, there's a lot of people teaching this. Um, so I would absolutely recommend finding a gap in the market there. So you have the ideas which is permanent cultural gardens, solar panels, online businesses, uh, rainwater. If you haven't built an online business, probably you shouldn't teaching people how to build an online business. Rainwater. Um, but I don't have expertise on this topic. Um, don't have the expertise. Okay. So this depends, like it really depends what you're, you know, you can, you can do things like, you know, you can talk about things that they work for you. And if you have that kind of expertise, like the only thing is like, if you start an online business, 
make it about something you're good at make it about something that you're knowledgeable at i think it's a great sign that your eyes slide up when you speak about this but then you know it might if you go down the route that you um that you build a business around something that you're not super knowledgeable in i would say start focusing on the things that are working for you that you can get results from that you are knowledgeable in so really start with that and then um, teach those things and then use the time and energy that you have to get even better at those skills. Um, and as you do a lot of that, as you get better at them, then you can touch more and more and more of them. But I would not teach something that you're not confident in. So you said like one of your coaches is telling you to do a 10 day challenge on how to start an indoor garden from seeds. I mean, that just feels very random. Like I would just go and validate the ideas first and find a gap in the market because otherwise you're just wasting your time. Like, I don't have any data. Like, do people, is there a gap in the market here? And I don't understand. Most people don't talk about that. But again, that's why I'm creating these videos to educate you on how you can actually build an online business, not just give you like, oh, build a challenge, do this, do that. You know, like, that's not how you build an online business. Like, you have to understand the fundamentals first. Um, but I would definitely say, try to see if there's a gap in the market that you can fill with your own expertise. So I'm assuming, let's say that, like, let's say... Um, you know, how to start an organic from seeds. I'm assuming you know how to do that. In that case, you could say like, yeah, you know, I'm going to create some free content about that. But then, and you can use that as a content test to validate your ideas, which I talked about in the validation video. Um, and then there would also have to be a gap that like, I guess people would have to want this already. Like they want, there have to be a lot of people who want to learn how to start an indoor garden from seeds. Um, and if there is demand and if you feel like you can't do this, if you've done it, you know, well enough, you figure out how to do it and nobody else is providing that, then that's a good mark gap in the market and then that's a good idea. I will say finding an idea is not easy. A lot of people say it is. I will say it's very difficult to find an intersection of something where there is demand, where there is excitement, where you have the expertise. Um, and if you don't find an intersection, I would definitely recommend just using this time not to build an online business, but really to get good at a skill that is in demand. So if you think about it this way, um, like, you know, again, you have expertise. So expertise um, and excitement, expertise, excitement and demand. One possible approach is it can work. It happen, works very rarely because people don't have the patience to do this. But let's say you find something that there is a lot of demand for, like that's this valuable valuable skill that um, is in a lot of demand um, and you're really excited about it. Like, for example, let's say that would be something related to creating like your own garden, but you're not an expert in it. So basically, like this is the reason why you, you know, cannot be in this field, but you're essentially in this field instead. Um, then you can always build this skill. It just means it's going to take you years to start an online business and not weeks or months. Um, but do it for the reason of like, you know, you just want to learn about this and don't worry so much about building a business. Build, focus on getting good at this skill. And then along the way, you can share some of the things that worked for you. And um, you can talk to about people about it. So you can have like some of these parts, you know, just like validation, research audience. Don't focus on building products and things like that. Like you can focus on some of this. You could even build a website as you do this, just sharing your own experiences, the things that you learn. You could do a lot of that. And then when you feel like, okay, I have enough expertise, then you can you know, start charging for it. So that's how I'd approach that. Um, but again, do it for the sake of like, you know, you wanna, you're really passionate about helping people with this, not for the sake of like, I wanna make money now because you're not gonna make money now. It's gonna take a while until you make money with this business. Um, so if that's your approach, that could work. And then the next idea is copywriting, but I haven't, not an expert and I'm not an expert that taking copywriting courses and not excited by it, but there is in demand. Um, I would say if you're not excited about it, just don't do it, um, even though it's in demand, because it's just going to be like working a second job. And then like, why, why would you build a business if you're just going to hate it, if you're not going to enjoy it, if you're not going to be excited about it? I would like, honestly like not, not worry about it uh, this as much. Um, and this idea seems like the best one, but I think like you have some digging to do to really find a gap in the market and then build the right skill um, to make things happen. So that's my analysis of that. And then for everybody that's still with me, jamming on these business ideas, um, first of all, thank you for being here for so long. Um, but let's look at the last idea. So, or like the last list of ideas, which come from 
Jan. So Jan says nowadays I'm doing some doing something about um, with home fitness, staying fit for business travelers, um, working virtually. But I don't know if I'll be still be interested in it last week. Um, no, if I'll still be interested in it next week. Um, and then now I'm thinking if I should instantly test this, all of the things you share with me. Uh huh. But at this moment, I think I should just write another book. Besides, I do have a freelance job next next to my job. It's writing books. Da -da 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 -da. So here's the thing. Like I have two responses to this question. The, um, let's actually focus on the actual business ideas. Home fitness, not great. I feel like there is a lot of demand for that right now, but also a lot of people are already adapting and, you know, building things around it. So I think like it's going to be very saturated very quickly. I would not recommend pursuing this in a global market. Um, next, staying fit for business travelers. Um, I think that's an interesting idea. I haven't done the research yet, but I would do the research yourself. And maybe if there is a gap in the market, that might be good, especially if you travel a lot and if you have a lot of experience with that, that might be an interesting idea. Again, I haven't done the research. There might be something there. On paper, it seems like it could be a great idea, um, but you have to see how much competition there is and so on and so on. So this one could work. It has potential, but you have to test it. Working virtually, I don't really understand what the problem is here. Like, is it virtual co-working? I also feel like there is a decent amount of competition about that already. Again, you'd have to do the research. My gut feeling is that it's not going to be the best idea because I do think there is a decent amount of this already. But if you can do better, if there is a big gap, if there is, um, you know, if there is demand for this, and again, you can use the techniques I shared in the previous videos to um, get insight on that and test things and see if there's demand or traction, it could potentially be a good idea. I feel like there might be too much competition, but I don't know. There, there might be some potential. Now, um, yeah, and since we have met in person in Rotterdam, I also know you're Dutch. So what happens when you apply these ideas to a Dutch speaking market? I think all of a sudden they become way more interesting and I don't speak Dutch so I can't that well, so I can't really do the research here for you. But maybe there's a lot of demand for home fitness or for this idea or for this idea for a Dutch audience. And those might actually be great ideas. And I would definitely explore those because um, that might be, you know, a gap in the market because a lot of people are doing like home fitness in general. But like, is anyone doing it for the Dutch audience? Could you come in and do it that way? or like for, you know, remote working or co-working. This might actually be really good ideas. For this one, maybe could also work. Um, this could be good ideas. Go out and test them. So that's that's my um, um, that's my advice. And I do feel for something like a Dutch audience, it could work really, really well. So that's what I would also recommend you to explore because any business idea that you have, if you just try applying it to a Dutch audience, I feel like there's going to be a much bigger gap in the art market because as far as I know, the online industry isn't that developed here. So that might definitely be an interesting thing for you to pursue. And then let me address the second part of things as well, which is like, I don't know if I would be interested in this next week. Um, look, I'll tell you, I'll just, I always like giving people honest opinions. My honest opinion is this. If you want to build a business, you can have some flexibility. Like you can kind of like iterate for business ideas every few years, like I have, like many people have. Um, and you can test things quickly and sometimes you'll test an idea for a week, sometimes you'll, you know, develop it for years. But, so you will have some diversity as you do that. And especially if you build a business and you do some sort of coaching and you, you know, work with people from different industries like I do, you can always find ways to make things interesting. So I think there's, you know, the argument for that. On the other hand, if you are not willing to commit to one idea for a few months or a year, if that's not your personality, if you don't want to challenge yourself in that way to learn that skill, to learn that discipline, to learn how to focus on something, perhaps running an online business or something like that might not be the best fit for you. It might be better to just focus on your job instead or on your freelance work or on writing books. I know most people will never tell you this, but I will say that like, hey, you know, it would be a shame if you spent, let's say, the next six months building an audience about one idea and then you're like, oh, I'm bored. I want to work on something else. And these are then the people you build trust with, you build relationships with, 
um, that want to learn from you and they want like a course from you or something like that and then you just disappear I think that would kind of suck as an experience so I'd say look being on an entrepreneur is not for everybody it does take a lot of time energy commitment the right mindset resources willing to put yourself out of your comfort zone it's not for everybody even though like a lot of people are saying like hey you can build a business without an idea if you're not an expert if you don't have the time I, I don't think that's true let's be honest let's have a you know let's be honest i do feel like building an online business it's not an elitist thing reserved for some people but i do think that you have to love the idea of working on this for the next year, for the next two years, for the next few years, and really building something absolutely incredible. Like that has to excite you. You shouldn't feel like, oh, I don't know if I'll get bored next week. You shouldn't be like that indifferent about it. So I can't really tell you what to do in this situation. That's what I noticed when people get like, you know, jump from one idea to the other, they rarely actually build successful online businesses. I also know that I get, you know, bored of some things sometimes and I get excited about new things very quickly so it's a skill that I'm constantly consciously building to follow through with things more to you know like really keep acting on the ideas and again like what helps me is developing a mastery mindset and then the customer focused mindset that really helps me with that if I focus on that um, then it gets a lot easier but I will say that try to challenge yourself instead of saying like hey this is how I am right now like I'm just a person that you know, gives up on things quickly or like gets excited and then doesn't get excited again. If you want to build an online business, you will have to build the skill of following through with things and doing them for a long period of time. You can try it out for a period of three months and then decide, is this working? Is it not working? And then, you know, decide what to do next. But if it doesn't work out, don't beat yourself up over it. There's nothing bad with like working in a great job, um, you know, doing some freelance work on the side or something like that. So you don't have to build a specific type of online business just because somebody else said so. There's a million type of businesses that you can build. I will say build the one where you can talk about a certain topic for hours and hours on end and you will not get bored of it because there's just much bigger chances of success. And then, of course, make sure you test and validate your ideas. Um, and don't be too hard on yourself. So that would be our best advice here. So, okay, we managed to create another, turn another short video into a really detailed masterclass slash teardowns thingy. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you watch the other videos if you haven't watched them yet. Um, if you want more, what I would definitely recommend doing is if you want more content from me, go to my website, primoshbaj.com. Link is in the description. You can download my ultimate guide to starting a six-figure online business. You can email me, um, you know, how you're liking these videos. I'd love to get your feedback on them. Um, subscribe to my email list. That's where I'll send you all the best stuff that I create, um, as well as these cool eBooks and things like that. And that's where you can also talk to me. And um, yeah, I would say, want to say thank you so much for watching this video. What's probably going to happen next oh something disappeared that's not good oh here it is what's going to happen next i'm planning on creating another video video with just the business ideas that i really love that are like super interesting or super niche and just i want to give you guys a better understanding of the fundamentals and really break down some businesses and why they work because a lot of people give you like this list of like 30 profitable business ideas but they don't give you the context i don't want to do that I want to go over like 10 ideas and break down exactly why I think they work really, really well. So that's what you can expect in the next video. And then we are slowly going to move into the next phase, you know, after the idea and the validation. Like I want to spend more content um, that's going to help you with these things and really internalize these things. I might even do a clinic like this in the future as well. Um, so I, I can't promise that I'll do it immediately, but maybe if a lot of you guys, you know, let me know that you want me to do another thing like this in the future, I'll, I'll make it happen. I'm listening to you guys and whatever you want me to talk about. If there's something else that you want me to talk about, definitely let me know. Email me. That's the best way to reach me. Subscribe to my email list and then email me anything else that you'd like me to cover in these videos that I haven't covered yet. But then after we, you know, focus in the next video on these two topics, um, I'm going to start diving deeper into the world of research, which is going to be a huge topic. Um, I'm going to give you a lot of different ways that you can um, research your audience um, and really understand your customers as best as possible so you can create the best free content and pay content for them. Um, so you can even get your first paying clients. We'll talk about that as well. 
So there's gonna be a lot of fun stuff that we cover. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of more of long, deep videos like this. I'm, I'm not gonna record 10 minute short videos unless there is a, something that happens to be short and quick because I really wanna help you develop mastery around these ideas and you can't do that in 10 minutes. Um, but I am gonna keep doing more of this. I know you guys like them. Um, do feel free to share this with your friends like if you enjoy them um, and then yeah you can expect more videos to come out even already this week and in the future as well so i just want to say thanks so much for staying here with me for you know a million billion hours thank you um thanks and then you know if you want to watch some of my other videos i'll put them here on this screen in the end watch some of my earlier videos watch some of my future videos um, just, you know, try to learn from this as much as you can and I will see you in the next video.